Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple farmer's policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the Auto Multi Policy Discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. In 1987, a former prosecutor named Margaret Kuhn took her dog for a walk in one of Louisiana's safest and most affluent parishes. The next morning, she was found dead on the side of the road. 34 years later, the crime remains unsolved. No one is safe. Listen to Gone South, Season 1, Who Killed Margaret Kuhn? A documentary podcast from C13 Originals. Available on the Odyssey app or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now back to more of the Ken and Curtis Show on EEI. No matter where he goes, he's a free agent next year. That's by rule. So his contract becomes null and void at the end of the season. You know, I, I think certainly the Saints would be interested. I think that's probably the place he would go to because they need a receiver. I, I can't imagine that, you know, unless you have a strong head coach, a strong head coach like Bill, like Sean Payton, you know, that you're going to bring this guy into your locker room. I mean, he has not played well. I mean, there's a perception about o- Odell, and there's the LeBron tweets about Odell, but then there's the player Odell, and that hasn't been the same guy. Well, it doesn't sound like uh, Lombardi, who's very well tied in, very well connected to the Patriots, is saying, absolutely go get him. Well, that worries me a little bit. He is pretty tied in. Well, I think this is good news for people that want OBJ because Mike Lombardi may be the worst scout in NFL history. <laughs> when you hear what he said about Nikhil Harry a couple of years ago before the draft, said he was like the best player in the draft. Yeah, but this is more reporting Lombardi. Like, Lombardi has sources, so he's saying, eh, I don't see it. He said the Saints. He thinks that's where he's going to end up. But real quick. The most likely, do you have the odds, by the way? Where Where is OBJ going to end up? Talk for a second, I'll have him. So NFL.com has six teams that he'll most likely go to. The best fit, number one, Green Bay. Number two, the Saints. Number three, the Raiders. Patriots fourth. Then the Bills and the Falcons, which I don't quite see, but okay. Sporting News has Saints one, Chiefs two, Raiders and Packers, and then the Ravens fifth, and then the Patriots sixth. Another team that's thrown out there is the Rams. But these are all good teams that the Patriots would have a you know, worse record than and therefore a higher waiver claim on Tuesday. So go ahead. All right, here are the five teams with the best odds, according to Vegas, actionnetwork.com. Uh, number five, the Bills, plus 700. Number four, the Ravens, plus 550. Tied to the Saints and the Patriots. The Patriots' second best odds, according to the Action Network in Vegas, to acquire Odell Beckham Jr. on Tuesday what at the plus odds? plus four fifty. See, and I would put a hundred bucks on that. Totally, you win four fifty if they claim him. Oh man! And the Raiders are the best odds at plus three hundred, um, which I understand given the week that was and losing a receiver for the rest of his career, likely. Now, people are very split on this. On the text line, you just put a poll question up. Uh, here's one text nine seven eight. Does OBJ suddenly make the Patriots a Super Bowl contender? If not, it's all risk, no reward. You're giving up short-term cap and restructuring contracts to make it happen, and he could stunt Mac Jones' progression. That's back to the Phil Perry article. If, if you're doing a move just to get to win a Super Bowl, then you know what's the point of even doing it? Why would you do anything? I mean, well, you, 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 you could you, argue that's all Bill's hanging around for. Well, no, I mean, uh, I think Shula's record incrementally wow. that you yeah. can. So let's say that this team, as it's currently constituted, would lose in the wild card round. Okay, that I think is the ceiling for this team right now. Okay, now if you add not a, even a win, they get in and lose round one for this team. Yes, as it's currently constituted, as the ceiling. That's the ceiling. Who's going to get the buy? The Bills. I don't know. There's like four teams. All I mean, it's so a the total first disaster. But, but let's say they're the seven seed as a wild card. And they play the two seed. That could be Baltimore. That could they could beat Baltimore. I'm not saying that, of course. They well, that's could. just saying the ceiling. I mean, okay, go ahead. I mean, right. I mean, I could flip a coin, and it could land on heads 100 times in a row. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not likely, right? Is that the ceiling then? No, I think the ceiling. I mean, you're saying they have no chance to win a playoff game. If you're I don't saying know the what ceiling, the odds are. Right, Greg. The ceiling would, I would say, be 
winning a wild card. What are game. the odds that he brings that sweatshirt back? <laughs> Greg, from Greg the Lululemon. Oh man, 100%. he was so mad. Oh, yeah, he's pissed at you. <laughs> anyway, um, but let's, with OBJ, what's the seal? So let's say they get OBJ and they get their way to the AFC Championship game and they lose, and then OBJ's gone. He signs a big deal with the Raiders in the off season. Win. Well, that's like the Red Sox season, right? Then Mac Jones gets experience in playoff games he wouldn't have played in yeah, had right. they not acquired Odell Beckham. Good point. Very good point. I mean, the ceiling, yes, the ultimate goal should be winning a championship. But in order to get there, what does Bill say every week? One of his players echo, we're stacking days together. we got to keep stacking Stack good days, wins. Yeah. good wins, good days together because they have a lot of room to grow because it's a young up-and-coming team. You know, And do you think a team would be thrilled to see Belichick in the AFC title game with Judon, that defense? You know, I don't know. I mean, they probably wouldn't go to the Super Bowl. I think we're going a little wild here, but... <laughs> Let's let's get let's see how far the team can go with OBJ and then worry about the short term cap loss from restructuring contracts. And I do think there is an emotional quotient of it. When Gilmore got moved, McCordy said, correct me if I'm wrong, he was surprised by it. He basically admitted that it was a little deflating or like it's part of the business. He didn't come out and rip the team, but still. Multiple people said we are not better because of it. Right. So now you add, it's like back to the high and bloom argument. You have the GM reinvesting in the team. Do you notice, Nick, how he just sledgehammers baseball into any conversation? Is it hot stove time? You yeah. said it was a Red Sox town it two was, weeks ago. was, key phrase. Okay, well, you just made an argument that getting to the final four for the Patriots would be incredible. That's what the Red Sox did. Right, it was, it was a successful season, absolutely, for the Red Sox. You, you know Biden's buy back, build back better plan? That's what the Red Sox did in 2021. They so, built back better. Did you see the infrastructure deal? They gave yeah. baseball $50 billion. <laughs> But not enough, in my opinion. Uh, 617 texture. Maybe Mike Lombardi is sandbagging for Bill and providing cover. Yeah, I don't trust anything Lombardi says. I don't know why we I pay do. him to come on the radio. He's station. often right. He's often plugged in on some of this stuff, on what they're going to do. Well, of course, his son is on the staff. Well, that's what I'm saying. So unless but, it's calculated to provide cover, I well, don't see that. I, I, I don't think that before the waiver claims are put in, that Bill is letting Mick Lombardi in on what the team's <laughs> plans are with OBJ. I mean, let's Patricia in. I don't know how he fits him in. <laughs> 617 texter. Who's better, OBJ or Deshaun Jackson? And who's a better fit? I don't want Deshaun Jackson. You don't? No. You yourself were raving about how impressive he was when they beat the Bucks head to head. Rams over the Bucks. He had an amazing touchdown in the yes, third quarter. So why can't he do that here? Um, and he's much cheaper. Right. I don't think he has the ceiling. And I think he is more likely to. His upside isn't as high as OBJ's. And his downside is lower. So I, pre- I prefer OBJ. 207 texture. I don't understand why people are even questioning claiming OBJ. This guy wants to be accepted, wants to impress Belichick. He doesn't want to be cut by Bill. Yeah, he brings some drama. I, I can understand a little bit of the questioning, but I'm for it. I think there are, there is more in favor of doing it than not doing it. But it's an odd thing with Patriots fans versus any other fan base in this market where it's like they're so protective of the culture and the salary cap. Like any other market, you say, hey, you got a shot for OBJ. They're like, awesome, let's give it a try. What's the <laughs> downside? It's not my money. It's not my, you know, like. Yeah, oh, yeah. Patriots fans have this odd they sort of. They bought into the culture. Well, right, but it's that. You do realize that that gives the team an, an out from spending money. They're, char- they're charging you, the fan, more than they ever have. So don't ask them to be a discount yeah, operation. But they spend a lot of money, so you can't really rip them for not Total spending Total cash money. spending, you want to go with that? Yes, route? this year. Let's do that. Okay, right. The last 10 years. No, let's do this year. Okay. <laughs> let's go to Danny and Quincy. It's about that time. Hi, Danny. Ken, you know, I can't believe you're not, like, at least for one week. For one week. After a throwaway season... A COVID-19 fraudulent Super Bowl by that dink last year that we had the perfect double play last week. Patriots beat the Chargers on the road, and then 25 minutes later, <laughs> the, the pick six that put that the great. puss back on the face awesome. of the puss face. It was friggin' awesome. <laughs> I, I just, and again, it may be short-lived, but that was beautiful. It made the whole weekend seeing that happen. I could not believe it. I thought it was like it was like a dream. I, I, I you know, Curtis, sorry, brother. I, I just had to get that out. I've been, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> it's, it's the mighty have fallen pretty quickly that we're doing dances over regular season wins and Brady. I know. And I, think, I know. Look I think at how far a, we've come. I think he had a pass rating of like one thirty in that game. But yes, it was a bad pick six. He, he made some good throws, Curtis. I'm not going to argue with you there, brother. But it was just a hey, listen. It does me for one week. All right. Anyways, I called you last week and I said the Patriots need to get a pass rusher. 
because they got an old, slow linebacking core, and then you look at Hightower get walled off. you got Kyle Van Do Nothing playing the air drums on freaking Dunkin' Donuts commercials, <laughs> which is offensive to me because I'm a drummer, and that, that's offensive. But <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. Then, You're a then, drummer. And then, wow. And then two days later, the Rams go out and get Vaughn Miller. Little did I know that he was even available. I mean, they know, they know, and that, that, is, a, that is directly a move to beat Tom Brady. They know they're going to meet Tom Brady in the, in the playoffs. Yep. And that is it. That's the key to getting Tom Brady uh, or any quarterback in the league. Yeah, and look what happened to Who Patriots cares about Tom Brady? Let's talk about OBJ. What do you think? Do you think the Pats should bring him in? I, look, it, I just don't want anybody poisoning the innocent mind of Matt Jones. Because right now, that, that kid <laughs> on the outside looking in seems to be full of humility rather than hubris. I don't know how long it'll last. Usually they all turn into Dink Davis, you know. Um, so I just don't want him poisoning him. I think he has to come here under two considerations. One, that he knows Bill Belichick is the boss and, and, that, and that Matt Jones is a rookie quarterback. And you cannot yeah, – I don't want this kid getting – I'd rather see him not make the playoffs than have that kid get ruined. By, by a poison. But can, now, but can you ever see him turning into a diva, Danny, based on what we've seen so far? That seems I, I impossible. I, not him. He, he seems like such a – but I thought that of Tom Brady. I, I thought the same thing of Tom Brady. I never thought in a million years Tom Brady would turn into the – to the Hollywood dink that he is right now, okay? Fair, fair I think it's an, I I think it's an offshoot, would. Danny, of winning seven Super Bowls. I don't I know. What, maybe that. if Matt can know, get there, he can become back, a diva, heard, you moron. He never, he never came into the league like that, Curtis, but I don't know. I just don't want him getting caught. I mean, your sooner first or later, call into, your first call, Danny, your first call into the A team, you were very respectful. What's <laughs> happened to you? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, but, you know... The, the pass rush is the key. I mean, they look at look at they did last week. They had a good game last week on the defensive line, I, except for that wall off uh, that that running that run that long run by San Diego. But I mean, you threw me off there on the um, on the on the on Beckham. I, I I just don't know. Oh, the uh, the Giants guy that called earlier. Yep. How long did it take Beckham to become? You know, I don't like to I don't like to use the word can you know cancer, but whatever. How long did it, the poison? How long did it take for him to become a poison to the Giants? That's uh, what I wanted to know. Well, if we can get if we can get through seven games, and he comes in knowing that Belichick's the boss, and he's got he's dealing with a rookie quarterback. If he comes into those circumstances, I'll take him. I you know I mean is that logical? Right, right. He lasted three years there before he started to decline. Oh, and they, made, okay. they made the play. I think. I mean, he was a Pro Bowler the first three years. Unless he was behind the scenes, right? So I mean, seven games. It may not. It may. It, it, it may. It may be worth it. But the one thing on Gilmore. Let me ask you something. Maybe I'm naive. All right. Belichick's advance on his salary last year was that a sign of goodwill by Bill Belichick, or or, or is it just complete stupidity? I, I think it was a sign of goodwill, and then it, it turned out to be stupidity because it didn't do any good. Okay, but so how how can you blame Belichick? For that, well, it didn't work. Right. Show goodwill. <laughs> uh, uh. I, mean, I mean, this isn't this isn't exactly you know like Sunday Mass here. I mean, it's an NFL. It's a business, and Bill totally mishandled that asset. I don't know how you can argue oh, it. I, well, wait a minute, but that, that's beside the point. I'm trying to say the guy gave him an advance on this year's salary last year, and then he comes back and says, "I not only want my salary that you gave me an advance on, I want that plus I don't know what he was asking for. Would you have given him a three year deal, Curtis?" Uh, when? Last year? Yeah, I would have given him a new three-year deal that would have been last year, this year, and one more. Well, I mean, can, considering his injury, at, at what price? Like, he's what, what, he wants $15 million a year for three years? Guaranteed money? Yeah. I don't know. Coming they off play an injury? Ramsey in Philly coming in, here. In I mean, hindsight, I would take the Jalen Mills money and put it towards Stephon Gilmore for a couple of years. Well, yeah, I mean, considering what they have, you're, you're right. But, I, again, I, mean, I, I just thought Belichick was trying to play some goodwill toward him and he came back and stuck it to him, and then his heart wasn't in it. Anytime you lose passion for what you're doing, and he lost his passion for the Patriots, it's time to move on. I say that about any player. Okay? All right, Danny, good call. Appreciate the call. And a good point by a texter. Clip off Curtis saying, let's not talk about Tom Brady. Good. Clip that off. Well, I mean, the guy calls in to, like, throw a duck boat parade over the fact that the Patriots and Bucks won and lost on the same day. <laughs> uh 603 texture, good question. Didn't Carolina say Gilmore will only pay, play on third downs? Doesn't that mean he's not quite healthy yet? I Could guess, be. I guess it does. But would you? What, what would you think of having Stephon Gilmore on your team just for third downs? But I, I guess it it verifies Gilmore's opinion that he was not 100% healthy in the beginning of the year. 
Right. If so, if what you're saying is right, Bill demanded he play. Well, I honestly, I don't think it means. I don't think it definitely means he's not healthy. I think it's an agreement that the Panthers and Gilmore to get him on the field. They say, okay, oh, he's not up to speed with the defense yet. Well, or he, it's a throwing down. Gilmore would like to get interceptions like he got last week, but doesn't want to get the wear and tear. He's a couple weeks away from a free agency. He doesn't want to get hurt. So I think it could be that Gilmore is trying to limit the damage for himself playing in playing their final eight games of the year. Let's go to Brett in Shrewsbury. Hi, Brett. Hey, guys. I had a question for you also about Gilmore. Um, I'm not as opinionated as Danny is on the Gilmore thing, but I do have to wonder the narrative that some Patriots players uh, were turned off by him being released, I would have to wonder if any of those players saw him playing for the same contract we were going to pay him this year, if maybe psychologically that made them less turned off by Bill, go smack around the Chargers, less less of a morale hit. I'm not saying it's not a morale hit, but I have to imagine that muddies it up a little bit for the players' thoughts on this, at least somewhat. What, what mitigates it, the fact that Gilmore – He's playing for the same. They didn't give him a raise. Oh, so they, maybe yeah. think, well, Bill wanted him to play for that money. He's playing for them for that money. I wish Gilmore was here, but I'm not going to like feel spite towards Bill when I'm kind of irritated. Gilmore will play for that same money he could be with us, right. with Mac Jones. He's doing it in Carolina. It's no contract boost to him yet. Right, but that right. just shows the relationship was at a point of no return here. I agree with you there. I agree with you. I'm just hoping that maybe we smacked her on the Chargers because some of the players were like not turned off by anything like that. Although they certainly could be, I agree with you, but that could help mitigate them being as upset with Bill, upset with the Patriots for being so hard on Gilmore. If Gilmore all of a sudden got this huge pay bump and played the first game, they might be more irritated, I think, versus like, oh, he's, why didn't he play for us for that money? Wasn't that what Bill wanted? Yeah, interesting point. I mean, to this point, you cannot say the team has collapsed because of the Gilmore trade. Now, that... If Gilmore picks off three passes tomorrow, that could change, I guess. Right. But, uh, I mean, we said at the time, this is just, if, above all else, this is balls on Bill, man. Like, you've got your rookie quarterback going up against the guy you traded away who was the defensive player a year two years ago. Bill just does not give an F. <laughs> you got to res- respect that. Absolutely. Brock in Middleborough. Hi, Brock. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, going back to the OBJ thing, uh, well, it's already been established that it's not going to be a big investment. It's not going to cost a lot. And a lot of the conversation has been, is he going to fit with the Patriots? What about Bill? What about Mac Jones, the rookie QB? But I haven't heard a lot of conversation about how much of the equation of scooping up OBJ is to keep him from going to another team that could potentially be in direct competition in the AFC. For example, if he's available when the, he gets to the Vegas, chances are he's going there because they need, they have a, a direct need for a wide receiver right now. There's, there's a decent chance that Bill is looking at the fact that he could have to play against OBJ if he doesn't pick him up, whether he utilizes him a lot or not. Yeah, not to mention the Bills. I mean, it could be digs all over again. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's multiple examples of teams that if the Patriots don't pick him up, they could be playing against him, whether it's in a clutch regular season game or even a, pre-season, a postseason game. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's out of the question that he scoops him up for that reason because it's already been established he's not going to cost a lot, even if it's just for one year. And I mean, in terms of the money that's spent this year, why not continue to go all in and keep a valuable weapon off any opponent's team? Yeah, great point. That's a good point. I mean, can you imagine the Bills with Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, add OBJ? And that, that, is, that is a Super Bowl caliber team. Everything we're saying about the AFC, they likely are saying in Buffalo, right? This team has been looking up at Brady for two decades. Now the AFC is wide open. The Chiefs are a disaster. What are you laughing at? <laughs> 617 Texter. Danny from Quincy doesn't want to say a cancer, but it's okay to say a poison. Has nobody ever died from poison? Yeah, he's got an odd proclivity for weird arguments and different... Oh, like, and he got mad at you for, for ripping on old people. For depends. Yeah, which you've doubled down on. Uh, throughout the week. I, I, I love old people, and it's funny to talk about people wearing Depends at You times. love Joe Biden. That's become clear on the Today Show. Well, I mean, he is the, if there's ever been a face for Depends, it's our commander-in-chief. <laughs> all right, all right. Bill got through, buddy. Trillion dollars. A Here's... vital part of preparing for hurricane season is to get vaccinated well, I now. agree. That's true. Are you like spending a trillion dollars? <laughs> what? To build back better. This, this is infrastructure. Yes, this isn't yes. to build back better.
Yes, infrastructure is building back. There's another bill that they're trying okay. to pass called Build Back Better. But this is part of it. This isn't. It's ab- infrastructure is building. There's a bill called okay. Build Back Better. Is this not included in that? No, this is the infrastructure. There's another trillion or whatever they're trying to put in that I one. lump it together. Okay. Now, what's the up, news? Coming up next, Daryl Ryder from the Fan in Cleveland, who's uh, tied in with OBJ. I mean, he's covered this team for decades, but uh, it's been, mostly been a mess. But lately, they've been decent. You would agree. The Browns have been pretty good. They won a playoff game. That yeah. Papa shot is actually part of the infrastructure bill. They put that in last week. <laughs> no, that was Fourier brought that Oh, okay. Um, by the way, any good college games today? Not really, that I can tell. I mean, the game of the week, obviously, was last night on ESPN. That was <laughs> yeah. a real humdinger. Hey, at least the BC won a game. Finally. Auburn good. and a and are like the only two ranked teams playing each other. Auburn and A&M, that's a good game. Oh, good. CBS 330. I like that. All right, but Daryl Ryder tells us what happened with OBJ and whether he thinks he would be a fit with your New England Patriots after covering him there for three years. That's on the way. First, it's trending. For the guys, Ken and Curtis. The Ken and Curtis Show on EI. Poll question is up at the Greg Hill Show Twitter account. Uh, Curtis, you put this one up. Should the Patriots claim Odell Beckham Jr. off waivers Tuesday at a cost of $7.25 million? Well, you put $7.5 million. Close enough. It is dead split 50-50. Yes and no. A couple hundred votes in. So this is a um, controversial uh, question of sorts. A divided question. Uh, anyway. One a little too other. controversial for my liking. Well, I mean, I think you asked the essential question at the start of the show. Is there a risk? Is there any downside beyond the money, to bringing OBJ into the Patriots' room, into their locker room. Joining us with some insight on this from our sister station in Cleveland, the fan, is Daryl Ryder, longtime Browns reporter, and he can tell us what happened out there. Hi, Daryl. How are you? Good, guys. How are you? We're good. Uh, First obvious question, I guess, why did it not work out in Cleveland? What happened? Well, I don't think that uh, the blame falls on any one individual. I just think it was a... The confluence of events, um, you know, Baker Mayfield and an Odell just really never seemed to develop that on-field chemistry and cohesion. Uh, Kevin Stefanski inherited Odell, and his offense is not predicated on targeting just one receiver eight to ten times in a game. Um, uh, so, yeah, I just I, – I think that uh, it, it's – I, I don't think any one party comes out of this uh, any worse for the wear. I think the Browns now can can move forward without him, and they have positioned Odell, which, by the way, they were really under no obligation to do. They could have really stuck it to him if they wanted to, but they didn't. Uh, they positioned Odell to be able to go ahead and chart his own path for the you know the next phase of his career. So. We've been trying to understand what you know, um, what went wrong, and also the relationship of Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham Jr. specifically, because his father clearly had uh, some issues that he <laughs> pointed out in the uh, the video he put together. What what was their relationship like when Odell arrived, and what is it like today? Well, what's interesting is is I, I never got the sense there was any animosity between either Baker or Odell. Um, I, I think that. Baker certainly tried to make it work. I know uh, they spent a lot of time together uh, in, in the off season. Uh, right before the season, they they went up to a national park. Baker and a couple of the receivers, including Odell, uh, just to kind of decompress before the the season began. Odell went down to Texas this year, even while he was not participating fully in practice during training camp. During some of the special teams periods or downtimes, Baker would go off to the side with Odell and and they would uh, work together and and throw footballs and whatnot. So it, it's really hard to say why this thing just never worked. But, you know, Odell was always courteous and, and cordial, but I never got the sense that he really wanted to be uh, a Cleveland Brown. It's as if he that's where he got sent. So he was going to put his best foot forward. And uh, I think he did that. But unfortunately, this year, the, the frustration of uh, the, uh, the continued injuries, the lack of targets, the, the Browns have lost three of their last four games. Um, there were a couple of key moments, one up in Minnesota. Odell's uh, running deep down the field late in the game. Browns could have put it away. 
Baker ends up throwing the football behind him. Just the, I think that that was their relationship in microcosm. Odell was looking and thinking one thing, while Baker Mayfield was looking and thinking something completely different. Well, on that point, we've had a couple reports that we've read which describe OBJ as a freelancer. Is that accurate? Is he a freelancer? Is he going off script? Well, a lot of successful players go off script. And and I, I do think that that is an element to it. Um, you can see in that film that Odell's dad so uh, politely published for everybody while uh, taking Baker to task. Um, a couple of those throws, Baker's double clutching. And I think in that that is a result of, oh, I better not throw it yet because Odell's about to do something here. Now let's, you know, let it go. But, um, yeah, I, it's, it, again, it, it's, it's really hard to pinpoint why this thing got to the point that it did. Uh, the reports that Odell's camp, even before the season, was asking for trades, uh, asking for a trade leading up to the Tuesday deadline, memo to Odell's camp, not a lot of value there, salary plus production plus injury history equals nobody wants you. So, that that created additional problems to this. And I don't mean that in a negative connotation. It's just that's the reality. Teams were not going to pay or inherit uh, going into a season $14 million in salary this year plus a potential $27 million to be added in the next two years after it, even though the contract included an out next off season where you, a, a team could get out of it uh, cap and cash penalty free uh, because I look, I think even if Odell stayed in Cleveland, this was going to be his last season here. So better to, than to create a rift in the locker room as, as you guys even saw on social media, all a lot of his teammates took to social media to dispute NFL media, put out that one quote from an anonymous player that uh, Odell was a malcontent behind the scenes, which that was the first that I had heard of that. His teammates historically love him. They loved him in New York. They loved him in Cleveland. Uh, even if, even though technically Odell basically quit on the team, they still love him as he as he walks out the door. So um, he is he's beloved in locker rooms, but not so much, I don't think, with coaching staffs and front offices. Couldn't you make the argument, Daryl, that Odell not fitting into the Cleveland locker room speaks to his football character, considering that Cleveland's been a doormat for about 20 years? Well, he fit into the locker room. Let, don't, don't misunderstand me. He fit into the locker room. Like I said, his teammates absolutely adore him. Uh, they came out this week uh, and said, hey, we would welcome Odell back with open arms. In fact, we want him back. And a lot of the players were perplexed as to why, including Miles Garrett, who said on Friday, I, I did this thing snowballed so fast, we don't even know what hit us. There wasn't a lot of communication for management to us to – what was going on other than he just wasn't uh, on the practice field. He'd been excused from practice or whatever, but uh, teammates love him. They, they really, really do. So uh, I guess, I guess to rephrase Daryl, to rephrase the organization, the issues he's had within yeah. the organization uh, instead of the, the locker room. I mean, the, the Browns had the great win last year in the wild card at Pittsburgh, clearly a big win for the organization, but they're back in last place now in the division. They got a really tough schedule the remainder of the season. I mean, yeah. it just seems like that, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. wants to win, I would guess, and he doesn't see that happening too quickly where he is right now. Well, it, it, what was surprising to me was coming off of the, the playoff win th that he asked for a trade in the offseason, which that told me he looked at the situation and saw he wasn't going to get numbers. And, and I just, I don't understand that mindset because you already got paid. Like you were making over 14 this year. I think it was like 13 and a half for each of the final two years on the contract. That's another one. You were already paid. So who cares what your numbers are when? And it was interesting because I actually did a one on one with him at his football camp before the season. And we did discuss that. And he said, I'm willing to set my numbers aside and be the team guy in whatever role they need me to do. That's what I'm going to do because winning a championship is uh, what's most important. Now, Maybe as this thing progressed, Odell looked at the team, he looked at Baker, and he said, you know what, there ain't a championship to be won here anytime soon, So, and I don't have a quarterback that's going to get me my numbers, so it's time for me to piece out of here. I, I think ultimately that's what happened. 
Um, whether or not that's a, a stain on his career or a black mark against him, I think that's for all the, 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 the pundits to decide. I will say that I soured on him this week with the way he facilitated his exit. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was uh, uh, the right thing to do from his standpoint because the Browns had worked to try to really make this work and, uh, you know, for him and his father to take the path that they took, I just thought that was rather unprofessional. We're talking to Cleveland Browns reporter Daryl Ryder from the fan in Cleveland here on WEI on the Kenny Curtis Show. Well, a couple of things you said there are interesting, you know, that Stefanski's offense is not meant for 8-10 to 10 catches a game. He's worried about his numbers. Having said that, do you see him fitting in New England? And where, if not here, where do you see him fitting? Well, Bill Belichick has a history of uh, bringing in players of Odell's caliber and making it work. And it, look, it's helped you guys win a couple championships up there. So I would say yes, because of Bill Belichick, the system that he runs, the uh, the operation there, the the amount of uh, consistency, right, that, that uh, has has been up there. There's there's not a lot of turmoil behind the scenes. It's a stable franchise. So yeah, I, I think if a team like the Patriots, because uh, I, I I'm a believer Odell has plenty left in the tank to give a team. I, I I don't think he's washed up by any stretch of the imagination. I've heard some of that this week. I disagree. Has he had recent injury history? Absolutely, but I still think he can be a difference maker. And um, so yeah, if if the Patriots were to either claim him or sign him in free agency, I do think he could make a difference. Uh, Daryl, I want to go back to 2018 away from OBJ for a second, if I can, because there's been a lot of talk up here since the Patriots traded Jimmy Garoppolo to the 49ers for a second round pick at the trade deadline in the 2017 season, that there were better offers out there had Bill shopped around. There was one, I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, that Mary Kay Cabot had reported that the Browns were willing to offer their first round pick at the top of the draft for Jimmy G. Can you speak to that? How do you view that? What do you understand or know about that situation from 2017? Well, I mean, the, the Browns were were looking for their their franchise quarterback in any uh, under just about every pebble that existed. Um, they had, I think, at the time started twenty eight or twenty nine different guys. Uh, back then, remember they they were just struggling to find a way to win a single football game. Uh, twenty seventeen, they went zero and sixteen. Right. So, um, yeah, I it, 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 as far as how close things got, I, I, I couldn't tell you. But I I do know at the time they were exploring a multitude of options, including Garoppolo, to try and get this thing jump-started here in Cleveland in any way they could. Uh, Things kind of fell their way. They ended up with Miles Garrett. They ended up with their their two cornerstones, uh, Miles Garrett and Baker Mayfield. Certainly you can have the debate whether Baker was the right pick because of uh, Josh Allen was in that class and a couple of the other quarterbacks that have – been extremely successful in the league they're in in the class but the bottom line is browns made the playoffs within three years of drafting baker mayfield with the first overall pick and they won more games than they did since 1994 in doing so and they also actually won a playoff game uh for the first time since 1994 as well so uh they they but i do know they 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 were exploring trying to uh, bring in jimmy garoppolo heck they had a trade with the cincinnati bengals that uh at one point at the trade deadline that they magically forgot the paperwork so that it didn't go through. But that's how desperate they were to find a quarterback back in those days. Well, I'll let you go on this, Daryl. You'll be up here in a week, I imagine, for the Patriots game. Uh, how do you size that up a week away? Obviously, things could change in a week, but uh, Cleveland at Cincinnati tomorrow, but then at New England next week. Certainly a winnable one for the Browns, but again, uh, the Patriots are – I know they're four and four and I'm sure Patriot fans aren't nearly as uh, excited about them as maybe they were in years past. But I tell you what, if, if the Patriots uh, can, can get themselves uh, in position in December to make the playoffs, I'd really like their chances to do so. Um, But uh, you know, what new England has to really worry about with the Browns is, is Cleveland's run game really because of uh, Nick Chubb, uh, Kareem Hunt isn't available. He's on injury reserve right now, but Dernis Johnson is the number two running back. He had that outstanding game on Thursday night football. 
Browns uh, defense has just been banged up all year. Miles Garrett still leads the NFL in sacks with uh, with ten and a half, but the the secondary has been a, a carousel of bodies because of uh, the injury bug. So I think it'll be a great game. Uh, certainly will not be an easy trip for the Cleveland Browns, but I do think it's an it, it's a winnable game. These are not the same old Browns where you look and see Cleveland's on the schedule and it's a bye week. And maybe OBJ here for a revenge game. Who knows? That'd be interesting. Oh, that wouldn't wouldn't that, wouldn't uh-huh. that just be a fabulous storyline? As if I've not written and talked about him enough the last uh-huh. week. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I know it's a busy a couple of days here for you. Thanks, Daryl. My pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, Daryl Ryder from ninety two three, the fan in Cleveland. So he says, not washed up, difference maker. After hearing that, do you want him? Do you not want him? Concerned about the numbers. I, I eight, love eight that to he ten did. catches a game. I love that he didn't fit in in Cleveland. I think that's one of his best qualities. Now, Greg Hill has texted in. He would like us to revisit the Babe Ruth trade. Do you think they have gotten more than a Broadway <laughs> than a Broadway show for the? They should have gotten more than a Broadway show for the best pitcher in baseball. No, no, Nanette. Pretty good show. Was it a good show? Oh, I loved it. Nanette was awesome. <laughs> I'm sure Greg was front row for it. Whatever it was, left Is he supposed end. to be golfing with his son? What are I know. That's the longest he's listened to the show. It's a whole nice. segment. Uh, plus, he's you know knee deep in whether Tony Soprano died or not. Got to get to the bottom of that. And truly, and diplomatic immunity. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. I do think it's interesting. I think the Patriots. Do you are think he's get wearing Lululemon on the golf course? <laughs> they have great warm warm apparel for men and a golf line. This may be an excuse to talk a little baseball. Can I wedge oh, a little hot Jesus. stove segment in? I next? take it back. We'll take diplomatic the- immunity. Thank you. We will get the OBJ calls. Uh, take them as they come. 617-779-7937. And you have three guesses. Is Greg going to Grill 23, <laughs> Capital Grill, Lincoln, or Ocean Prime? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll put that poll question up <laughs> as Ken and Curtis continues. Back to more of the Ken and Curtis Show on EEI. Ken and Curtis here back to the OBJ discussion, which is the hot topic of the day. Should the Patriots claim him on Tuesday? And the phone's back to there in a second, 617-779-7937. Also, it was a big week for Celtics talk. It, they were like a team on the brink, despite being seven, eight games into the year. First of all, I was courtside Monday, which was an unbelievable experience. With Wiggy, first of all, surreal, sitting next to Wiggy, and then sitting next to David Posternock, who was two seats behind, beside him. Poor and Pasta, man. Jeez. Totally. Like, Pasta's there, nicest guy ever, taking selfies with anybody who wanted. He and his girlfriend were there. And Wiggy pulls out the cell phone and starts showing him the hockey highlights of he and his son from his personal, like, backyard games. It was unbelievable. Did you say anything like, Wiggy, what are you doing? <laughs> I tried, but it was like, you know, what do I gonna? You can't stop Wiggy once Wiggy gets going. He is a force of nature. He's a force of nature. But, but anyway. How- could you imagine what does Pasta care about your <laughs> hockey team? He was good natured. He was he was good. good All right, he doesn't it. speak English, so it made sense talking to Wiggy. And I had no idea how cl- like we're like underneath the net for those. And the guy to my right, Rob Hale's son, starts trash talking the Bulls, and Vucevic actually looked over and shouted back at him. I mean, you are within shouting. You start trash talking these guys, they literally hear you and start talking back to you. Not to uh, one up, but I I was a row behind the floor for the entire playoff run of the Celtics 0708 team. Ooh. So we were there for every game, uh, you know, through to the end. I was yelling things to Kobe <laughs> that were a little rude. Why couldn't you go Monday night? By the way, I wasn't invited. Are you serious? I swear to God, Greg invited me before you. What an upset that is. Well, and that's why I said the a-hole on Twitter, because you tweet out at me well, I just that you're going to the game, had... and then you're like, at V1 Vodka, going to get blitzed <laughs> well, tonight. I... I was like, dude, F oh, you. I, I didn't mean to put the vodka at you. I, that was well that, well, that was it. It was just me and Shaq that you tagged. <laughs> well, it was a separate thought. When you go out with Wiggy, he has Ciroc. So I thought we were going to have Ciroc courtside. Right. Tur- turned out I got a Coronas. Yeah. But so, uh, anyway, then I had to I tag missed V1 Vodka. I Greg's zero calls on Monday. So I was not invited. But that is shocking because he always invites you before me. Obviously, he likes you more than me. You, you guys are more like minded. You two are huddled all over the place in the building together. Oh Jesus, which is uh, fine. But I'm, but I'm. It's a, I. Uh, yeah. Well, you're well, the boss. I, we well, can't I, let you in on the. Okay. The, well, I apologize, and thank but, you, Greg, for the tickets. Uh no, I I think that he presumes that the answer is no because that's always what it is when it's like going out at night. I'm not really a big uh, party animal oh, anymore. Like I am though. You're yeah. You're at the suite from time to time. 
you know, you, you do uh, big get-togethers, you do cameo pictures with fans. Anyway, Celtics sit back in action tonight, but no Jalen Brown. But the Red Sox... I can't to, believe he showed... That's real. He really showed video yes, yes. of he and his son playing hockey. He showed me before. He's like, I'm going to show Pasta this video. And I before I could say no, like he's taking us out and start showing Pasta. You yeah. should have filmed. That would have been awesome. You I should have filmed yeah. Wiggy showing him showing the, film yeah, to I Pasta. I, I got a nice picture of this. The too. vodka. It was, it was Coronas. But anyway, free agency in Major League Baseball starts tomorrow. Okay. It opens tomorrow. It's also the deadline to tender qualifying offers and all that stuff. Now, I texted you before the show, and I said, can we get some hot stove talk in? I am actually ready for this. I, I agree with Pete Abraham for the first time in my life. What did he say? That the Red Sox should make a, a an effort to sign Carlos Correa. Well, that's not what you texted me. You said there won't be a Red Sox game for two years, and we shouldn't discuss this. Well, that's true. Both can be true, right? <clears throat> But you want to? You, but you actually will humor me for a second. Yes, here. I will. Because this is a this is a good free agent class. Now I don't know if anybody's going to sign before the labor stuff happens. Do you think? Do you think it will just be total no until they figure out whether it's a lockout? Nobody signs anywhere. I, I'm not saying this to like get a rise out of baseball fans. I was my first love is baseball. Whatever is the dumbest thing to do, that's what baseball will do. So it's dumb to not get any buzz. So there's going to be no signings. There's going to be billionaires and millionaires, the cliche, because it's true, are going to be arguing over dollar bills. So that'll be collusion. Yep. Because it's not, I mean, free agency opens. So you're, so nobody will sign anywhere if for a month. I mean, everything I've read, Drellick, not to, I'm not kidding, Drellick and Rosenthal had a story yesterday in The Athletic, and it's like everything is worse than the day before. There's no, there, there's... Well, there was a counter offer, and like now they're going to wait and go over the counter offer. Right, and, and Tony Clark according to the, the the piece that I read, needs, quote, a big win here. So Tony Clark needs to look like Don Fair did back in the day, that mm-hmm. the players view that they're losing power. So, listen, I hope I'm wrong. I hope we actually get a good offseason. I think the Red Sox had a great year in terms of fan support and getting people back to the park and back engaged with the team. It would be beyond a mistake. It would be negligent. If baseball does what I think they're going to do, which is miss playing time because of the work stoppage. And that would be December 1st, I think. That's it when the league year ends. Is when they can lock it out. Yep. So uh, this could be a moot point, but J.D. Martinez might opt out tomorrow. That seems like more likely now than ever. Kind of Rosenthal had said that. Nobody thought he was, but then now, now it sounds like he might. Which right. I, I mean... I don't. Do he's you think giving he's, up nineteen million bucks, right? Do you think he's going to get a big deal in the I, open market? I guess he'll get like a three or four year deal with more money. So maybe to him, that's all he cares about: more total money. He, you know, if he gets but hurt, he he's signed protected. here. He was a Red Sox fan. He went to Fenway <laughs> when he was a kid. Remember Foxborough that? forever. Yep. Uh, and then they have the choice to make about Erod, whether you tender him or not. Which, you know, I guess you could tender him and still get something if he leaves. But I, I don't get the sense that Cora loves Erod. But then you look at the free agent market. So real quick. I won't spend too much time on this, but Correa is like the, everybody's top pick. 29-year-old franchise, shortstop, 10-year deal, mega money. And Eduardo Rodriguez, I heard, pointed at his watch because he's like, it's time's running out, you need to offer money to Correa. <laughs> what do you say to a kid when their heroes are cheaters? Yeah, I can't see Correa coming uh, Was here. that that windbag talking about Tom Brady? Sound like Dr. Phil. Oh, it's Browdy. Oh, it is? The, guy oh, hated. Sure. <laughs> the only thing he's been right about is much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Correa's not going to come here, right? He's going to go either he'll stay in Houston or the Yankees will get him. And uh, really, no shot. I don't think. I mean, Correa, the guy that the watch guy, the, you know, with the cheat. The, I, I, believe, I mean, I guess Cora loves him. I believe he said he, he thinks of Carlos Correa as a son. Yeah, but I don't think the Red Sox want to get an Astro and further the connection to Houston with Alex Cora. Right, and David Price's dog was Astro. And if you bring him in, then Bogarts gets bumped. He goes the. You know, but I feel like third, that, right? that everybody that talks baseball, which is you and Rob, they've <laughs> that's they, everybody. Yeah, they've said that the um, that there is who were we just talking about? Carlos Correa. Yeah, that um, God, I lost my entire train of thought. Me and Rob talk. talk we talk baseball. Bogarts is not an elite. Oh, defensive sorry, shortstop. Bogarts is yeah, fine. Sorry, Bogarts is is going to be, but he's not going to be a shortstop for long. He knows he's got to move to third or second. That that Boris is his agent, and they they made it clear to the Red Sox and others that he knows he might have to move at some point. He wants to stay here long term. By the way, this is interesting. Pedro, 
Martinez told the Globe it would be a mistake for Bogarts to opt out of his contract after the 2022 season. Hopefully for he, for Xander, he has the same love for Boston that Boston has for Bogarts. But everybody assumes he's going to opt out. So he's basically saying Bogarts should be a good team guy, like a city first guy and just play under the contract at that point. But that's that's not going to happen. Bogarts is the first real leader I've seen. Eh, maybe Pedroia, but he was like five foot two. So I, I think Bogarts is a true leader on that team. But he's not going to stay for three more years for at sixty million total just to be a good guy. So he's, he- he's going to opt out. And, and you think he'll get more than three years and sixty million? Yes, yes. After twenty, after next year, of course he will. You just gushed about what a leader he is. He's going to get a huge deal. Okay, I mean not not like the biggest deal of all time, but a, but a more than three years, three why, by twenty. Why do, the, why do all these baseball contracts have like opt outs, opt ins, player? Yeah, that was never the, the case growing up. Why is that now? Well, is that's that... why they're going to lock him out. Oh, uh, and I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, Greg's on the hotline. Oh dear. This is incredible. Greg has listened to the show for the better part of 45 minutes. Here is Greg Hill, the star of the Greg Hill Morning Show. Hi, on Greg. the Harbor One Hotline. On the Harbor One Hotline. Oh. I'm driving around. There's, I'm driving around. There's nothing else on, so that's why I'm listening. <laughs> uh, how was dinner last night? Where did you go for the week, the birthday week? I, I didn't go anywhere special last night. I heard everything you said. I can, I'll answer all of those questions later, but I just would like to point out the reason I texted regarding the Babe Ruth trade is, Curtis, your obsession with proving Bill Belichick to be inept is unhealthy. It's weird. It's unhealthy. You are, you're literally on the phone with the press boy from the Cleveland Plains dealer, and you're asking why Bill didn't get more value for Garoppolo. Oh, I mean, that was a great question. Years. It's four years ago, five years ago. Give it up. Right. Babe Ruth was 100 years ago. We still talk about it. It's just just weird. I I found it interesting that there were all these reports from Cleveland that they would give up a first-round pick, and it's never really been discussed around here. So I figured, hey, we got Daryl Ryder on from Cleveland, a real firecracker. And I'd say, hey, what happened? That was a the, big get. It, I mean, that was a huge get. You know, I pushed body moving to Tuesday just to get him in today. So you should be happy. All right. Well, anyway, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the show. I'm picking up a charcuterie board at Wegmans right now. Oh. So um, I, <laughs> You are not uh, going then, to Wegmans. That is too yes, lowbrow for you. Ch- Ch- Chestnut Hill, Wegmans, grabbing a charcuterie board, and then I'm teeing off at 2 p.m. I will not be wearing Lululemons. And so, are you going to stop uh, by Seasons 52 for a nice locale lunch? <laughs> I, might, I, might, I might. Now that you brought it up, I might. I'm enjoying the show, and thank you, fellas. See you Monday. Love you, right. See you later. That's Greg Hill. Superstar, <laughs> and birthday week continues. I forgot there's a Wegmans in Chestnut Hill. That's, a, that's my Wegmans. Now, uh, coming up next. So uh, we just got. I just tipped the iceberg on the on the sock stock. So can I just finish up this thought because we're up against the break? Well, Greg, thank you. Actually, I owe you big time for calling in the middle of baseball. Talk. <laughs> well, I mean, look, the, the texts are pouring in. Bogarts is underpaid versus his peers. You got to re up Devers. Look at this baseball talk. Like all these this texters hear so my happy. jokes, and you never even like. Uh, it was a good joke. Good joke about the Astro thing. Fine, <laughs> it's a good joke. <laughs> So what's yeah. what's the bow tie we're going to put on this uh, little we'll, thing? We'll discuss next. It's oh. Ken and Curtis. Hello, I'm Jason Concepcion, former co-host of Binge Mode, Ravenclaw with Gryffindor Rising, still repping the Night's Watch despite Season 8, and the host of Crooked Media's new podcast, Expert Vision. Every week, my guests and I will take you through the world of comic book movies, fantasy shows, and more. Join us as we deep dive into your favorite franchises, discuss fan theories, and the latest news. Listen now for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a Farmers customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a Farmers Home Policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers minded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. This month on the 11th, Pineapple Street Studios presents The Beige Room, a three-part series about a notorious self-help seminar. 
Host and filmmaker Kelly Lautenberg asks why millions of people are flocking to spend their weekends in beige hotel ballrooms, divulging their deepest secrets with hundreds of strangers. Supporters say that what takes years of therapy to do, this program can do in a weekend. But how? And what are the consequences? That's this month on the 11th. Just search for the 11th now wherever you get your podcasts.